risks to global financial stability have been increased over the last six months. And this has been due to three main factors. First, higher macroeconomic risks in the context of a weaker growth and inflation outlook. Second, um, falling commodity prices and increasing concerns about China, which have put pressure on emerging markets and in credit markets in uh, advanced economies. And third, lower confidence in policies and in policy traction in an environment of higher economic, financial and political and geopolitical risks. Now, all of this has been reflected into the market turmoil, which to me is not just a one-off event, but a signal that there is still more work to be done. It is essential that banks' remaining challenges are addressed once and for all because they're key to financing the economic recovery. Banks are pressured uh, as a result of two developments, cyclical and structural. Cyclical because of the weaker growth and inflation outlook, which puts downward pressure on bank profitability. And second, structural challenges coming from the need to further adapt the business models of banks. For example, if we look at advanced economies, banks, the percent of bank assets which belongs to banks, which have significant business model adjustments to make, is about 15%. And in the euro area, to this you have to add dealing with non-performing loans and excess bank capacity that exists. China is embarked on multiple transitions and it's making good progress in rebalancing its economy and also in moving to a more market-based financial system. But it's also true that there are challenges, challenges linked to the deteriorating health of corporates in China in a context of lower growth and of diminished corporate profitability. Now, this is reflected in the fact that the corporate debt at risk of not being repaid, meaning corporates whose earnings are below the debt service, has gone up to about 14% of total corporate debt. And this may imply in the future potential bank losses of up to 7% of GDP. Now this is a significant number, but it's also manageable, given that banks have uh, buffers and also that there is fiscal room for maneuver because there is a low debt to GDP. So this is manageable, but this issue needs to be managed now. Well, much is at stake. Starting from a baseline of relatively weak growth and where financial stability is not sufficiently entrenched, I can envisage two alternative scenarios, a good one and a bad one. The bad one would be a scenario where because of adverse shocks or policy missteps, growth is even weaker. We have renewed episodes of financial uh, turmoil, which could lead us into a situation over time of economic and financial stagnation. That's something that could cause the world up to uh, nearly 4% of global output over the next few years. Alternatively, we can go to a better scenario. And that better scenario would be one where growth is stronger and where financial stability is also stronger. And as a result of a balanced and potent policy mix, we can get there. And this could mean that the world would gain nearly 2% of global GDP over the next few years. Now, what is this more balanced and potent policy mix? Well, going beyond monetary policies. Monetary policies remain crucial, but they can no longer be the only game in town. You need also structural reforms, supportive fiscal policies wherever there is space, and financial policies to improve banks and non-banks, like markets and also the health of corporates.